Welcome back Venom fans. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a real quick video on one of my favorite products is our 125cc uh, Jeep. Um, so this is how it uh, shows up at your house. So what we're, I'm going to show you first is the tools we're going to need. Uh, so if you come up here, you're going to see real quick, we're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. You can use just an Allen key set, but I like uh, using the number, it's a number five you're going to need, millimeter. Uh, but I like using it for the ratchet, it just goes a little faster. Uh, you need a flat screwdriver. You will need a 10 mil socket with an extension, just makes it a little bit easier. I could do it with this 10 mil socket, but I'll explain it a little bit more in the video. I like to have the smaller one. Uh, an extension, a quarter mil socket, a uh, uh, half inch socket uh, with a 15, you want a 15 mil. You're also gonna want a 17 mil. This, it doesn't really matter. It's just for uh, helping line up holes and things like that. So a good solid uh, shaft screwdriver would be perfect. You will need a 13 mil wrench, a hammer, and a pry bar. And I also keep the jig lube. Uh, it's really good for doing the tracks uh, for the seats and also for the chain. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the crate. I'm gonna show you real quick how you can remove that. So you just need your little pry bar here. If you come down to the tabs at the bottom, just give them a little bend down. And then move to the next one. And with these tabs, folks, they're very sharp, so please be careful. They will cut you very easily. So we're just gonna go around the whole crate and we're just gonna bend down every tab. So once you have all your tabs bent down, so what I want you to do is just straighten them out with the hammer. There. So you got them all straightened out now. And what now, all I want you to do is come to your end of the box, just give it a lift. Then I want you to go to the other side and do the exact same thing. You click the left. Okay. So then we're going to go straight up with our box and off the jeep. Okay, so you got your the top of your crate off. I know everybody's excited, they want to see the jeep, it's nice, but I want you to take a crate off the side, put it back down, then I want you to take the styrofoam that came with your Jeep, over the crate and just spread it out, there's a method to my madness here, okay, so now when you come underneath the Jeep, you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff, so what we're doing here is we're going to take all the stuff that comes with our Jeep, and we're going to put it on our crate here. The crate uh, makes a nice working surface. So there's going to be a lot of parts and stuff. We're going to just file them all out. Then we'll go over the parts. Um, and this, again, it gives you a nice surface to work on uh, to get everything put together. So you come underneath. You've got your gas tank. You've got your roll bars. This side, you got your steering wheel, another set of roll bars, and you got your tire. That's another uh, great feature with this Jeep. It comes with a full size um, with an aluminum rim spare tire. That's uh, unheard of. That usually doesn't happen with ATVs. Windshield. Put a windshield here, and then there's just one more thing, and that's our box of uh, hardware. So we're gonna kind of move this over a bit because we're gonna take our box right here. And we got our box of hardware. Okay, so the first thing I like to do when I start the Jeep, I like to take it off the crate. Um, it makes it very uh, awkward to try to work with it. So if you come to the back here, it's, you don't have to be a big man. You can literally lift this by yourself. If you do need help, <clears throat> get a friend to help you. But you just lift up, roll the wheels forward. And there you go. 
Okay, so first thing I like to do when I start the assembly, uh, I take my seat out. Now, when you take your seat out, there is uh, a backing that goes on the seat. It's a lot easier to <clears throat> put the, the roll bars on, things like that, without the seat in there. So, and to put the seat, the seat belts in too, it's the same type of thing. It's a lot easier to do without the seat in. So to take the seat out, you gotta come over here. There's a little uh, thing right here, just like in a car seat in a car. And you wanna remove that. It's a little bit tight, so you're gonna have to work with it a little bit. This is the only time that I have to fight with the seat like this. It's just when you first take it off. And I'll explain that a little in a little while when we get it off. Okay. So now we're just gonna flip our seat over. We're gonna come over to our where we made our little work area here. I'll move my gas tank over. Okay. So on the back of the seat, you'll notice the back because this goes obviously on the front. So on the back of the seat here, there's pre-drilled holes. I know you can't really feel them, but they're there. And then this is the top part of your seat. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go into our uh, in our box over here and we're gonna have to take a look at everything inside there. So this is our box of hardware. There's lots of fun things in here. I didn't have a knife, so I'm just gonna use my flat screwdriver. Ooh, look at all the goodies. All right. So all the stuff that's in this box, we're gonna be using almost immediately. We got our seat belts. These are the brackets for our seats. So we're gonna bring that over. We'll just go ahead and set that on our seat. I'm gonna keep digging in here. This is what we're looking for. Uh, this is the hardware bag. So we'll kind of set everything out of the way for now. Because this is what we need to do. And just dump it. Don't try to root through stuff, it's just pointless. Okay, so if you look here, there's a bunch of Allen, black Allen bolts in here. You want all of those Allen bolts. And after you have all the Allen bolts, you want all these black washers. They are all the washers from inside. And they go on those, so we just wanna make sure we get all of them. Perfect. Okay, so we've got all of these. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just slip our washers on each one. And there should be 10 of these all together. You're gonna need six of them immediately. Five and six, perfect. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna just sit them on our, our seat here. And then we're gonna open up our up our side rails for our seats. I'm just gonna grab my uh, my ratchet and my Allen. We got our tools. Uh, something I'd like you to do is grab your Phillips or uh, Phillips screwdriver when you're doing it. And if you feel along these holes, you can go ahead and just put a punch in the fabric. It makes it a lot easier than trying to put a bolt through the fabric. So just kind of feel around. You'll feel the holes. There should be three on the bottom. So there's my first two, I can see. I just gotta find the other one. So the other one's gotta be around here somewhere. There we go. So 
there we go. So then you take your first three. Just finger them in tight for now. Okay. <clears throat> Now we're just gonna move our other three bolts off just because there's something I wanna do. I wanna stand this up and I want you to push down on that really hard before you tighten it. <clears throat> oh. And oh, I'll come around this way. You want that all the way in on the seat. If you notice, I pushed it way down on the seat. Tighten that one and make sure it's all the way down. And I'll show you why I'm doing that and why I'm forcing it down like that as soon as I tighten it. Okay, and this one is already forced down, obviously, so let's tighten it up. Now, you see, it seems to be like it really pressed into the seat. There's a reason I did that. If you don't, and you go to put your seat back into your Jeep, what's going to happen is those... Uh, those uh, seat back right there are gonna rub all here on the plastic and it's just gonna it's just gonna make scratches up and down your Jeep. So it's best off to push them in on the seat first. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And now I'm gonna start the other side. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take my felt screwdriver and look for my holes. There's one. Another one. And another one. Perfect. And we'll get our other bracket. Come to the side. Put our screws in. And again, I'm going to stand my seat up and I'm going to push down on those to make sure that they're nice and tight. You want to get those tight too. You just don't want to over torque them because you're just going to pull out the, the thread that's inside and you don't want to do that. So tighten fairly snug, but don't over tighten. Perfect. Now, we're just gonna spin that around like that. And we're just gonna leave it standing up and we're gonna come to our, our seat back and we'll take it out. See on the back of the, the rear seat, or the back of the, the seat here, you're gonna see two holes. Again, just go with your screwdriver. Quick punch through, it makes it a lot easier if you're trying to fight putting bolts through that's no fun okay perfect so now we're gonna go our, get our last four allen bolts right there and we're gonna go ahead and put those on now to put those on i like to stand this up It's going to be the same when I tighten these. I'm going to push down on them. Okay. Push down. Again, just snug. You don't want to over tighten them.
So this seat is adjustable. I don't know if you've uh, noticed here, but if you look up at the top here, um, there is an adjustment bolt so that if you can make it lean back a little bit or, or go a little bit forward, it all depends on uh, on how you uh, like to sit. If you like a little bit more straight back type thing, you can. Okay, so. a little bit tougher so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this in a bit you'll see that one see how it was all so we're gonna finesse it a little bit Now we've got our seat put together. We're just gonna set it off to the side for now. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the roll bars on. You see there's a roll bar contacts here everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you how to do that really fast. Um, and actually, uh, and then we'll, I'll show you how to put the seat belts in, in, in right after that. So, you're gonna come over here, you're gonna get, these are your roll bars. Your roll bars will have bolts already in them <clears throat> for the back bar. The back bar is right here, behind our gas tank. So we'll better away. And this is the back of our roll bar. So we're gonna need all these three component, components right here. And then need the left side, <clears throat> right side, and then our rear bar. So we'll go ahead and start on wrapping those. And please, folks, do not use a knife. Try to unwrap them with your hand. What's going to happen is you use a knife and you cut all the way down this, you're going to leave a cut in the paint here. It's going to leave a big scratch in the paint. You don't want to do that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is put on the back rack. But what I want you to do is go ahead and remove the bolts from here. And there should be two on each side. So the right has two and the left has two. We're gonna go ahead and pull these out. Now, when we put our rear rack on, you'll notice that the rear rack didn't have the bolts in it, but it obviously doesn't have any uh, threads put in it either. But I want you to look at this bolt and come over to your hardware and you're gonna find two bolts just like that. They're both the exact same as that one. That's the bolts you're gonna to wanna to take. And we're gonna leave those two bolts. These are for the center rack. That's for my right rack and this one's for my left. Set them with those, and I want you to take your back rack from the back of the Jeep. Line up the holes with the threads, and then put these two bolts in. <clears throat> you don't need a ratchet because you won't be tightening these down right away. Just want them to go in finger tight. Now we're gonna go get our right side first. 
I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna put our right side on. And what I might do, sometimes you're gonna find that it doesn't line up or it doesn't, just doesn't seem like it's gonna line up right. That's all right. That's why I only finger tighten them in first. And then uh, after I'll go ahead. These two are for this one right there. So I'm just gonna sit there, there, leave that there like that. Okay, so from your hardware bag, you're gonna grab two of these shorter 10 mils. <clears throat> so if you look from the, the ones that go into the back of here, they're a little bit shorter, but you don't need them very long. It's just to put this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that one in first. And you don't need to put it in real tight again. Any When you're putting these on, just go finger tight. That one's to the other side. I'm gonna lift this up. We're just gonna start, again, we're just gonna start them. We're not gonna put them in tight yet. Okay, so now we're gonna get our left side. And again, when we get our left side here, we're gonna, get, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and put this one in first. See, I'm fighting with this a tiny bit. It's not because the hole's not big enough, it's because when they painted it, there's just a little bit of paint. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Get the paint, get it through, get it started. Again, just finger tight. And the reason I only do finger tight is if I have to adjust or move anything, you see everything's loose, I can, I can move it around. So if I tighten one side, I wouldn't be able to uh, adjust anything or move anything to, to get them to start in their threads. Okay, so now your back rack's on. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna get my 10 mil on my quarter inch ratchet. You can't use a half inch for this, but you'll need an extension and I'll show you why. So if you come, you're gonna need just to put your 10 mil on here. It's the only way you're gonna get a ratchet underneath. And you want them tight, but don't over tighten to the point where you snap a bolt. Uh, and then again, here. Now, if you see I go to do here, and I can't do it because this bolt here is in the way, that's what you need that extension for. You do your bottom one. Again, tight, but not over tight. Okay, now we can take our extension off. Now our back rack's on, it's nice and solid. It's straight. Okay, so now we're gonna come back to the back again. We're gonna put on <clears throat> the last few things on the back. So we're gonna come back over to our hardware pile. I'm gonna go on our box here and you're gonna find a few things. You're gonna need this first. This is the rack to hold the back tire on. So we're gonna Go ahead and get all the, the wrappings off of this. Okay. So you've unwrapped uh, <clears throat> both these things here. Um, this here is for the tire. This is for the gas tank. I'll show you how we use that after. Um, okay, so if you look at these two holes right here, 
you'll notice that they're threaded, okay? So you wanna take these two bolts, feed them in through the back. They might be a little hard to turn, and it's not because the threads are bad, it's because they painted them after. So the paint is in the threads and it gets a little uh, stiff sometimes to turn your bolt in. Okay, and you want to tighten that all the way in. For this, you're going to need a 13 mil wrench. Okay, put the next one in. Again, sometimes they're tough <clears throat> just because there's paint in there. Okay, so we've got our bolts in our uh, tire holder. Now we have to mount it to the back of the Jeep. So you see that there's a bottom piece here. If you feel around underneath there, you're gonna, <clears throat> there's a piece underneath there that has a thread in it, goes into the frame. Uh, and then these, these just basically go up there. So what I usually do is I like to start to put the bottom in first and then do the tops. It's easier to lift up on it if you do it that way. But again, you're just gonna go in finger tight. You don't wanna go in really stiff and tight on it because then it's not gonna, uh, it's not going to want to move, so let's do our bottom bolt first. So again, I just have it finger tight, but I can lift up on it a bit like this to, to maneuver it around. Let's see, we'll strap this side first. And just again, I'm going to put it in not too tight. This course is not going to be fun. Okay, not that bad actually. So then <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of lift up so the thread goes in like that. Okay, so now <clears throat> it started both sides. And now I can go ahead and tighten it up. Okay. 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 So now, next we're going to be putting on our... Uh, our gas tank holder so we'll come up to the top here so we unwrapped it we took our uh our plastic off and we're just going to take our gas tank out this gas tank by the way is functional it is actually a gas tank it's not just for decoration it holds 10 liters of fuel so <clears throat> it actually has the exact same amount of fuel that uh the, the gas tank actually holds in that and it, like i said it is functional so you are allowed to fill this it is uh, a gas can so we're just going to shut that out of the way we don't need that right now I'm gonna come back over to get our little bolts here. We need uh, two more 10 mil bolts, just the short ones. So we're gonna take those over. And you're also gonna need another set of bolts with nuts on the bottom, just like this. And this little bracket here, okay? So we're gonna take this over to our Jeep. And we're gonna set it down. Put that off to the side. Oh, I actually forgot two bolts, but that's okay. I'll go back and get them in a sec. All right. So the first thing you want to do is just put your gas tank thing up here. Put your bolts in. But you don't want to, or you don't want to tighten them up right now. You just want to finger tighten them because you have to run the rack underneath. So. Okay. 
And I'm gonna get two small little bolts again like that. And there's a reason why for that. Okay. Again, just two small 10 mil bolts. And they, if you look underneath here, this goes to here like this. So if you feel underneath, there's two places underneath that have uh, thread already put in them. I'm just gonna flip it around the front. Okay, so we're just gonna finger tighten them. I don't want them tight just for the simple fact is we want this all to line up and here. <clears throat> so we take our nuts and bolts here. Every bolt you need is in, so you can go ahead and just start tightening it down. So we got our last bolts tightened in. So then you can take your gas tank, put it up, set it in place. Take the locking band, put it across. Lock your gas tank in place, there you go. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our tire on, our spare tire on the back here. Um, but actually what I'd like to do before we put our spare tire on, to show you very quickly how to put the seat bolts in. So we'll go ahead and I'll wrap the tire here. But I think I'm gonna put my seat bolts in first. So uh, for your seat bolts, you're gonna need these big bolts right here and three nuts. So you have three of these big nuts right here. Those nuts are 15 mil. So we're going to take an extension and our 15 mil and our socket and we're going to, or I'm sorry, our ratchet. And we're going to come over and put all this down here. If you look at the holes, some of them just don't line up correctly. So that's why I kept that big screwdriver I was telling you about. So I can put my screwdriver in adjust everything move it around so I can put my bolt in I'll do that on every one perfect so now we're gonna get our seat belt this is our our seat belt harness system so what we're gonna do is I like to put the middle in first. And when you put the middle in, you want this flat part down. So you don't want to flip it over like that, have it sticking up and grinding into the plastic. You want to have it like that. You 
take your bolt and you go ahead and put it in. It. So go one bolt in. Now, when you're doing your seatbelt, I want you to make your seatbelt flat, bring it back around with this. If you do that, you'll notice it stays flat on the bottom here. So you can go ahead and put your other bolt in for your seatbelt. Same with the other side. Make sure it's flat. And if it's done right, it'll be flat on the bottom like that. Go ahead and put our last bolt in. Sometimes. Okay, so we have all our bolts in now. We're going to go ahead and put our nuts on. Uh, to tighten up the nuts, you're going to need a 15 mil uh, and a 13 mil wrench. So we'll do. Uh, we'll start on the, the passenger side here. And I'll go from the bottom. When we put the seatbelt in, the reason I didn't want to put the tire in, because I would have been fighting with this tire the whole time trying to tighten it up. So let's do the center now. Okay, we got our nut on. Come back up. So all our seat belts are in place, moving on. So what I want to do is I want to remove all my tools out of here. And I'm going to slide the seat belts back. They will go behind the seats. So we're just going to keep it from behind the seat right now. And we'll go ahead and we'll put our back tire on. We're going to get these lug nuts and, we'll, and you're going to need a 17 mil wrench or a socket for that. Okay, and we'll mount our spare tire.
you want to be careful with these because the threads on them are very fine. Okay. And you don't have to over torque these either. Maybe 16 pounds <clears throat> with an aluminum rim, you don't want to distort the rim or break it. So there we go. Start our back tires on, our gas tanks on, our rear racks on. Okay, so now we can move up. Uh, what we're going to do next, we're going to put the seat back in because we don't need it out anymore. Um, you really see how I fought with the seat to take it off? I don't want to fight with it again like that. So, what I recommend and what I do when I do an assembly is uh, I use stuff, uh, the Jigaloo here. Uh, Jigaloo is just a white lithium grease. It's really nice sort of spray in the tracks and it'll uh, it'll help the seat move back and forth. Um, so I, again, I come up and I just give a quick spray. And that'll help it uh, grease in and out of there a little bit better. Okay, so next thing I usually do is I go ahead and I put the seat back on. Sometimes it can be a challenge, but uh, we're hoping it's gonna go on nice. Okay, so I had to uh, finesse it in there a little bit with a, a mallet, but it went in. Um, it's a little bit easier when you're sitting on it and move it a few times. Um, so now you have your seat belts in the back here, but if you notice, I kept them all together. So now all you have to literally do is pull your seat belts through and you're good to go. Just like that. Full size. And there you are. So our seat belts are through. Next, we're gonna put on the windshield. So, we're gonna to come to our windshield. Here. And what I like to do is I like to take all this plastic off, but I like to leave the white plastic on for now. This is being shipped to a customer, so I don't like to uh, take too much plastic off the windshield. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab my windshield. And you're gonna wanna grab the two last 10 millimeter nuts that you have. There's these two long ones, but you don't need those just yet. You need those nuts together. So anyway, we're gonna take our two here. We'll come over our windshield. And we're gonna slide it on. Okay. And you'll see at the bottom here, There's little holes for your bolt to come up through. And I'll go ahead and tighten that up. And you just want to finger tight until you get the other one in. Just hold it so you don't put too much stress on that bolt until you get to the other side. put this bolt in. Okay. Now 
I'm going to go to the other side and tighten it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's on. Now we're gonna come back over to our hardware box and we're gonna need that nut and that nut and our mirrors. And these two funny bars in here are your uh, stabilizers for your windshield. We're gonna need that bolt on that nut too. So we'll need all this hardware right here and back over to her. Okay, so these bars, what they do is they stabilize the windshield. And I know it looks like it's crazy far distance, but I'll show you how to fix that. So now anytime you're putting something like this on you want to put the thread on the inside so you can't get damaged if you're driving around out in the bush or something so there's smaller nut put it on here and then i always like to go to the other side do the same thing in again you just finger tighten that so you can move it around a little bit so we'll start with our left hand side mirror what I want you to do is I want you to rotate this bolt or this nut I'm sorry all the way to the top just like that then you want to grab your, your nut and you can just use your elbow to lean back on the windshield to put it into the hole. And you go underneath. And put your nut on. You don't have to worry about your mirror here yet. You can play with that after. What I want you to do is make sure that you get that on tight. Just finger, again, finger tight, because you're gonna be doing the other side. So again, we get our mirror. Screw that all the way in. Here again just again if your jeep's in neutral it's gonna roll just stick your tire or your foot under the tire there so it doesn't move around okay and we'll put that through there and then if you look underneath there's a little tab of steel sometimes you kind of have to Finesse it a bit to go in the hole. Okay, so we got this mirror on now. We're gonna go ahead and <coughs> put our bolt on the bottom or our nut on the bottom. Okay, and now I'm going to go get my 15 mil. I'm going to tighten those up. Okay, and your mirrors, you can always set your mirrors up after. You'll see it's uh, floppy, but you can uh, actually set that nut right there. Perfect. That mirror's good. Now we're going to go to the other side. Again, we'll tighten up our nut. Okay, so again, tighten up your nut here. 
bring our mirror into place, perfect. Okay, <clears throat> then you have to tighten up here. So that's a 13 and a 10 mil. <clears throat> so I just use my, my wrench there. on there tight everything's tight now and uh, <clears throat> so there's one last final thing to do and that's to install our battery um, that'll be down here on this side oh and the steering wheel the steering wheel is always the last thing I put in there because if honestly if you're trying to work on this thing and your kids are uh, around the first thing they're gonna want to do is be cranking on the steering wheel and you, you don't want that it's just no fun so always put the steering wheel in last then your kids will literally leave you alone okay so now what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the battery in. So this is the bracket that holds it in. Uh, these are two bolts. And then you'll get a little foam pad like this. This little foam pad is actually gonna go on the back of this bracket and it's gonna go against the battery just to not to have it jumping around inside the frame. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that first. So we just kind of measure it on the back of the frame. Do a quick cut. You're gonna to need to take off the sticky paper. And there you go, and it's gonna stick on just like that. All right, so we're gonna grab our bolts. <clears throat> Very important, these. These are uh, for putting our connection ends on the battery. So we'll go ahead and we'll open that. And then we're gonna go ahead and slide those in get our screws in and just this just makes it a lot easier for when you're installing it so do that this one into okay perfect okay so our battery's ready to go in all we need to put our battery in are you gonna fill up the screwdriver and our trusty 10 mil and let's go to the battery Oh, one more thing I forget is inside your uh, handy dandy little box here, you are going to get some zip ties. After you put the battery in, you're going to want to zip tie the wires up so that they're not uh, all in the way. Um, here, I'm going to show you the last few things that are in this box. There is the cover for the steering wheel, and there is your toolkit. The toolkit this head comes with, <clears throat> you could actually put together everything on the ATV with it. I would not recommend it. It's a lot easier if you use uh, good hand tools. Trying to put uh, anything together with this toolkit is uh, not going to be fun. But this is great to have if you're on the trail. Um, if you ever need to change a spark plug, anything like that, it's always great to have a toolkit. So we do include a toolkit. And then we'll go ahead and put that back in there. And <clears throat> so when you have your toolkit like this, throw an extra spark plug in. It's just handy to have. Throw a spark plug in your toolkit and keep it with your Jeep. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the battery in. Okay, we got our battery. It's about to get intimate with the floor. Oh. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our battery. Oh my goodness. Now, you see there's an awful spaghetti of wires down here. So you want to pull your wires out. You don't want them in there. And then uh, you're going to push your fuse back. The first thing you want to do is push these boots off because they're just in the way. So just push them down on the wires. On both sides, you want to do the negative and the power like that. You just want to get these boots out of the way first. And there we go. Slide it up. <clears throat> okay. Now, your battery is going to go in like this. You want the posts out. You don't want posts in where they're going to touch on these, this uh, metal here. So, what well, first one we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our power on. So, we're going to take our screw out. And we're going to go ahead and 
put our screw through our, our battery cable. We can put it down into the bolt, or into the nut, and tighten it up. Just finger tight. And that's because I want you to cant it like that a little bit. Get your screwdriver and screw it in there. Okay, and then you slide your little boot forward and put it over the post. You don't want these posts exposed. If any steel touches this, it's gonna cause sparks. It can blow up your battery. You don't want to have it uh, exposed. So go ahead and put our boot on. Okay, and now we're gonna get our, push those out of the way. And we'll get our neg negative cables. Take our screw out. Oh, I can see our lights are on. Oh, the ignition's on. <clears throat> so we know we got power. And <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna screw this one down. I'm just gonna, before I put that in place, <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. I don't want it to kill the battery. Okay, so we're gonna slide our boot back up on our negative cable. Cover our boot, our uh, negative one. Perfect. So now uh, we're just gonna slide our battery up, if you see. There's a little pack that slides into and it holds in the little holder here. Our holder, we're well, gonna move all our wires there. Our holder goes up and holds it in place there. So we just need to get our nut and bolt for each side. Okay. <clears throat> now we're gonna take this one off and get it up in place. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten those in place. Okay, now our battery's in there nice and solid. And now you'll see <clears throat> all your wires are kind of hanging around here. You don't want that, because then they'll be bouncing. So, take your zip tie, bring it up on the frame. And you grab your fuse wiring. And your power and stuff, and you just put your zip tie on. And oh, and zip tie all that <clears throat> up all the way. There, so our zip tires all up, all our wires are out of the way. <clears throat> Perfect. So next thing we're gonna do is actually the last thing we're gonna do is our steering walls.
This is our steering wheel. And your steering wheel, when you put your steering wheel on, <clears throat> what's gonna happen is this is always gonna be at the top for it to be straight. This is at the bottom. So you're just gonna remove your steering wheel bolts. <clears throat> now when I put these in I'll put the bottom one in like this I'm just going to put it in finger tight for now Now, the top bolt, I don't like running two bolts in the same way. So I'll go to this side and put the other one in. the last one okay so that's nice and tight we straighten out our steering wheel our wheels are straight this is uh, the EPA tag um, okay so now there's only one last piece to put on that goes on right here that case has a little box right here to put this on is super easy you just slide it down until it cooks in there and push in the bottom and that's it <clears throat> so that is the full assembly of your jeep um so what we're going to do next is we're going to be uh, doing a startup video just check for uh, the link below um but that's our jeep assembly video i hope you enjoyed it